Hi, my name is Valerie Bogar, and you're watching Insight. And you're probably wondering, especially if you watched Insight with us before, like, this looks a little bit different. That's because we're at a different location. We're at Cuvée Catering in Miramar Beach, and I'm here with special guest. I'm here with celebrity chef Crehan and some Insight kids. So how about you guys tell us a little bit about yourself? Celebrity chef Crehan, <laughs> <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I've been in the Gulf Coast as a chef uh, since 1987. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from, I was born in Hartford, Connecticut, but I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I moved to Baton Rouge when I was very young, so that's kind of what I called home. So growing up in Baton Rouge, you know, it was a great place to be a part of the food industry. I worked mm -hmm. with some great chefs. I uh, was around John Falls and um, just was a great place to grow up and learn the trade. But we vacationed in Destin and Fort Walton Beach uh, okay. with my parents when I was young. And I just loved the beach, loved the water and loved sailing. And I said, I've got to get there. So when I turned 18, I packed up everything to a Jeep and Drove oh, wow. to Destin, I've been here ever since. Awesome, that's really cool. Yeah. That's really adventurous. To just, uh, he's like, I'm gonna get in a Jeep and just go. That's it, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well we have one of the Insight kids here, Montel. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, hi, my name is Montel, and I was uh, born here in Fort Walton Beach. I go to Choice Academy, is where I am learning how to be a, a film producer. I am learning how to uh, work my cameras and I how to like set my audio levels right and stuff. And I'm also a skate, skateboarder. It's kind of, it's kind of what I want to do when I uh, get into film producing. I like want to uh, record my friends and uh, other people like skateboarding or like showing off their special talents and stuff. It's just what I'm looking forward to. That's really cool. And then you also love eating. So this is a perfect segment. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure later on, you know, you get to try some awesome food. All right. Yeah. And then last but not least, Isaiah. Hi, my name is Isaiah. I am nine years old and I go to Elliott Point Elementary School. And like, um, I really like to cook. And so this is a great opportunity for me to like learn how to like cook and stuff. Yeah, I know. I heard a little bit about that because you watch some um, cooking shows too, right? Yes, ma'am. So now you're actually going to be like on a cooking show. Aren't you excited? Yes, ma'am. I'm excited too, mainly for the eating part. Because, <laughs> man. All right. So um, well, let's start with you a little bit. Um, so what, like exactly what age did you start really like cooking? So I got in the kitchen early with my mother and my grandmother, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I was in the Boy Scouts of America and going on camping trips really? and the food wasn't so good. <laughs> And so I made a deal with all the guys and my troop said, look, I'll do the shopping, I'll cook the food, mm -hmm. but you have to do the cleaning up and everything else. So the deal worked out really well for me. And that's really where I started cooking independently. Um, from there, um, I wanted a job. I wanted to work as quick mm -hmm. as I could. So on Mother's Day, 1979, I was at dinner at a steak and ale restaurant in Baton Rouge mm -hmm. with my family. And my sister already worked there. She was a year and a half older than me. Mm -hmm. So she already worked at the, the restaurant and I'd put it in an application, but didn't, you know, didn't hear anything back. So that day, the manager was running around the restaurant like crazy. He looked at me, he said, didn't you apply for a job? I said, yep. He said, looked at my mother, he said, when can he start? Oh, and wow. I said, mom, can I start today? And she said, I'll bring him back after lunch. So she brought me back that day after lunch. It's kind of been neat because that's been my anniversary in the business. Every Mother's right. Day that rolls around, that's what I consider my restaurant anniversary. Aww, that's so so cool. it's a special day for a lot of reasons. You know, I always think, I always tell people and kids too, like, I think once in their life they need to work in a restaurant. Like, whatever position, I think you need to, you learn so much. You and do. It, and um, actually, Monsell, he works at uh, one too, right? Yes. In Fulton Beach. So, can you tell us what that's like when you, because you, this is like your first, you know, job really working. So, what is it like working there? Mm, it's pretty decent. I mean, yeah. we do a, a lot of prepping and stuff. Sometimes, like, in the beginning, it was like tough for me. It was like mm -hmm. difficult for me to like understand like the process. Mm -hmm. But the more I did it, the mm -hmm. more I practiced it, the more I like got better and better with like knowing what goes here, what mm -hmm. goes here, and what I have to do like putting all the stuff together. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, I think this job like really That's awesome. inspired me. In yeah, because I hear sometimes in stores, and sometimes you have you know you have good days and bad days. You're like oh, some people you know you work yeah. with, and other days you're having a blast. So like I said, I think it's awesome that you're working in the restaurant. And I think it's helpful, and I work at your restaurant, yeah. and I love and I meet so many different people. So it's a lot of fun. Um, so speaking of which, can you tell us a little bit about um, Cuvée and Destin? Well, Cuvée and Destin is my, I, I lose track of all the restaurants, but it's been my, <laughs> it's been my most exciting project. Mm -hmm. You know, as you go through your career and you, 
you do different things and learn mm-hmm. different things. Um, I was fortunate to be able to do, start Cuvee in 2010 and really pull from all the experiences I'd mm-hmm. had from Marina Cafe, Beach Walk, my market out at Sandestin, Copper Grill, um, and pick some of the things that I enjoyed the most about all of those and put them into one package, uh, something that was attractive to the locals as well as to our tourists that have been supporting the business for years and right. years and years. So um, it's a culmination of 30 years mm-hmm. in Destin restaurant business and I'm very excited about it. It's a lot of fun. I have a good time there. Yeah, I mean, I love the food there. I'm not biased or anything. Um, <laughs> but it was really cool because, you know, especially like people who come in visiting from, because people think of larger cities as like known for food places like New York City. I was born in New York City. So you think of that as food. So I think it's kind of cool that noticing in our area and Destin and stuff it's really getting big and we have restaurants people come out and say hey I came specifically you know for Mm -hmm. these you know restaurants here so it's pretty cool that like we have our own little nice little foodie place. I've always said you know all my years in Destin and I think a lot of people have been here for a long time say you know for a small town the amount of great restaurants is is nice I mean that's not you don't find that in all small communities so we've been pretty fortunate to have that. That is awesome and um you know what? The cool thing, I called you Celebrity Chef Crane because you, you are, but um, I'm sure you cook for some celebrities too. So I have, you know, in my days of cooking, I've, I've crossed the paths of some really wonderful celebrities and, mm-hmm. and uh, one of my the favorite one of my favorite stories is you know Vince Gill and Amy Grant were at my restaurant eating one day and it was Mm -hmm. it was the only day that I take off I was off and I I stopped by the restaurant to check on things and one of the girls at the front desk said do you know who's downstairs and I said no who's downstairs (laughs) and she goes Vince Gill and Amy Grant I said oh wow that's pretty neat so went down and I want to say hi to them and um, at the time I was working with Peter Boss at Legendary Restaurants Mm -hmm. and we just built Regatta Bay Golf Club and uh, you know, the country club, the golf mm-hmm. course, and they were very big golfers. Yeah. And so they said, oh wow, is there any way we can get on the golf course? And um, uh, I said, well, sure, no problem. I'm, I'm running the restaurant division. I have nothing to do with the golf course. Yeah. So I called the golf pro up and said, hey, Vince Gilliam, we're gonna come golf tomorrow morning. He goes, Tim, we are booked solid. And I said, well, you can have to figure something out. So anyhow, about a week later, I get a phone call uh, from one of their, their people and they said, would you be interested in catering the wedding for Vince Gilliam and Amy Grant? And I said, let me check my, no, I'm good, Let's, of course I'll do it. And um, they said, well, there's a couple of caveats. One is it's in 15 days. And I said, wow, that's pretty quick. So um, I said, I think we can pull it off, no problem. So we proposed a menu, they accepted it. And um, about five days out, they called and said, well, it's gonna be a few more than 350 people. I said, well, a small number change won't make a big difference. They said, well, it's gonna be about 500. And I said, okay, so now we're doing this in the backyard of their house. No commercial kitchen, no catering trucks. This is all done on, you know, barbecue grills hot boxes so we served 500 people in their backyard and they just were so gracious and you know my my current cookbook which will be cooking out of today um, you know we did some dishes for their wedding and mm-hmm. people would come in extra the TV show came down and did a story uh, about me doing the wedding and I found out that's why it was only 15 days out they actually had had another caterer lined up but either what they tried wow. or whatever relationship we yeah. forged they said we want to go with Tim and so that's what made such a short fuse so I learned that on the show um, but people would come in the restaurant and go, we just want what Vince and Amy had. <laughs> so we had to change the name of those dishes, just name them after themselves because wow. it was easy for our staff. So um, when it was time to do the book, I mm-hmm. wanted to feature those recipes in the book right. and I called them up, you know, out of respect for them today. would love to put the recipes in the book. Is there any way we could use mm-hmm. your name? And they were so gracious, they sent photographs of themselves <laughs> and said, yes, put it in the book and we'd love to be a part awesome. of it. So that was really nice. That is really cool and you know what? Um, before we go, because we're actually going to, on our second half, we're going to actually make some food. That's right. So we're that's the exciting beautiful thing. Beautiful local destined fish. Yes, yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> so, um, and I know we'll talk more about, and also you uh, had a thing with um, all kinds of art culinary programs, stuff and working with kids and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. So we'll talk about that in the second half. But the other cool thing too that I mentioned, and while we'll scroll up before our uh, break, is all the awards you have. Because I know when I'm in the restaurant and people come and they see all these awards. So you guys are actually going to go and check it out. So right when we get off, you're actually going to see the whole scrolling of all the awards that um, Chef Crean has had and the restaurant we had and then when we come back you get to see some cool uh, food that we're gonna have and what we're gonna have we're gonna try we're gonna do the signature seared tuna dish which Ooh, is exciting. quite a popular one I love fish we are like live in <laughs> Emerald Coast so of course we love fish all right so see you right back here on Insight
What is a community? Is it where we live? Is it what we do or what we love? Is it our schools, our classes, our streets? Is it our diversity or our children? It's all of these things. And with your contribution to United Way, our community can thrive. Your support moves people from poverty to possibility. United Way. Real people. Real results. Our commitment to the community is something that we believe in and act on every single day. It's a key part of our culture and who we are as a company. Cox donates millions of dollars in cash and in-kind services to support local nonprofit and civic organizations each year. We recognize that a healthy community is a growing community. Here's a look at just a few of the organizations we support right here in Northwest Florida. We're extremely proud of all these local partnerships. Together, we are working to make the Gulf Coast thrive. <laughs> the average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. We're back here on Insight. And we're on location at Kube Catering with Chef Crehan and the Insight Kids. And I'm actually excited for this segment because, as you can see, there's food in front of us and we're actually pretty hungry. Um, but before that, um, earlier we were talking about a little bit of history of um, Chef Crehan and um, pretty much how we got started with uh, cooking. And then we talked a little bit about what the kids and I know here Isaiah, he actually wants to be a cook. And then we have Montel, he has a job, he works at a restaurant. and. So we talked a little bit about that, and we left off a little bit um, with what you had instructing with middle school students, because you have taught with kids, yes. and it was an all kinds of arts culinary program. Well, like, what yep. was that about? Matt and Kelly had an after school program at um, the Destin School, and mm -hmm. we would go in the afternoon, uh, when school was over, they'd sign up mm -hmm. for different classes, and one of them was a culinary program. So we'd go in there for an hour and a half and do everything from making our own pasta, to making pizzas, to cooking fish, and it was a lot of fun, we had a good time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was fortunate at a young age to be trained by Chef Philippe Perola from Paris, France, who was in Louisiana at the time. And you know, he took me under his wing at about 15 years old and really gave me an education that, that in those days wasn't available. I mean, there was mm -hmm. the Culinary Institute in New York, uh, but there weren't schools all over the country. And I was fortunate to almost be in an apprenticeship program. So whenever I've had the opportunity to give back to young people, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Philippe <laughs> taking interest in me at 15 years old. So um, we've we've had young young gentlemen like yourself come into the restaurant and say, I want to go see the kitchen and I want to go work back there. And, and we're happy to, to help out any way we can because that's where the next generation of great chefs are going to come from. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like it's weird because I think especially with so many TV shows and stuff, it seems like it's getting more and more popular, especially with this whole celebrity chef kind of, you know, it, title. It absolutely so, has changed. Yeah. I mean, I remember in days going back to the grocery store, if you needed some of the restaurant, you something, you'd go in, in your chef jacket and they'd think you worked in the meat department. <laughs> You know, and nowadays, you know, kids are coming up, oh, are you a chef? Are you on TV? Do you, you know, so there's definitely a different level of awareness for sure. Food Network has changed what we do for a living. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. We have the kids here and they're going to learn a little bit. And so we're going to go, because I'm really excited, as you yeah. can tell, I'm eager to go to this. But um, with this dish, can you explain what we're going to be cooking today? We're going to do a, a, one of my most popular signature dishes, and it's a great representation of the indigenous seafood in mm -hmm. uh, Gulf Coast. Beautiful Gulf caught yellowfin tuna. Uh, which is where it starts. I mean, I say in my second book that find the best ingredients you can find and prepare them simply. Mm -hmm. um, you're not trying to mask or cover up the flavor of the, of the mm -hmm. protein or the ingredient. You're wanting to, to showcase and highlight it. So in this case, you know, one of the things that miss, I guess, some people are confused about what tuna is, they always talk about color. And people think the, the, the more vibrant red or the color of the tuna is what drives the quality. And it really comes down to texture. You want to you touch that real quick? Touch that piece of tuna. What do you feel? Like well, no, isn't it? Doesn't it feel pretty firm to you? Push, mm -hmm. touch it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, compared to say, like a chicken breast or something, it's pretty firm, right? Yes, sir. Well, that's what you're looking for with tuna. You want a firm flesh uh, tuna steak. That means that that is is very fresh. It was mm -hmm. caught properly. It was stored properly. If you could take your finger and do this, and tuna starts to come off on your hand, well, that tuna is not as fresh. Wasn't handled as properly, and you probably wouldn't want to use it for this preparation. Where we're gonna we're gonna eat this like sushi. We're gonna eat it rare. 
Okay. So you really want the highest quality tuna that you can get, and you want it to be nice and fresh. So that's that's number one importance. If you go to a fish market to buy tuna, you simply just ask them, you would tell me you want to look at the tuna, smell it, feel it. Fish is going to tell you if it's fresh. Okay. <laughs> if it smells like fish, it, you probably don't want it. Oh, so that's good you're looking know. for a real clean, fresh smell. Okay. Um, now, I started the fire here. Uh, this is an important cooking technique. Um, you know, of course, there's nonstick cookware out there, but even without nonstick or with nonstick, if you want to ensure something doesn't stick, there's a mm -hmm. technique in cooking hot pan, cold oil. So mm -hmm. you get your pan nice and hot and put your oil in cold and immediately start cooking. A lot of people start their pan up, they put their oil or the butter, their fat in there, and they bring the temperature of the two up together. That will cause sticking. So to ensure no sticking, hot pan, cold oil. Um, we're gonna actually take some black pepper. Now this is a coarse ground black pepper. Uh, and the, way, the reason I say that is because if you had a real fine, like the kind you use for table pepper, that's got a lot mm -hmm. of white powder in it, yeah. that's gonna be a lot hotter, a lot hotter. So we're looking for the pepper flavor. We're not looking so much for pepper heat here. So it's important that we use a coarse ground pepper all right, get it on both sides really good. Then, again, I want to make sure our pan's nice and hot. Give it a few more seconds to heat up. We've got some canola oil here. Of course, the recipe's in my cookbook, which we're going to make available on your Facebook page so right. people can get all the details for it. Um, but we're going to take some cooking oil. Canola oil uh, is our oil of choice. You can use olive oil, but you, this is a little bit getting a little hot for olive oil. Olive oil has a lower flash point. It'll burn, start to add unpleasant flavor. So um, a little higher temperature oil is better. Now we're gonna put this into the pan. We don't need much at all. Have our tongs ready, because this cooks very quickly. Okay. So we're going to, we drop the tuna away from ourselves so the oil doesn't splash on us. Okay. Cool. If you drop it, drop <laughs> it this way, <laughs> you know, maybe you count to uh, seven or eight. Flip it over. Mm. Same thing, maybe count to 10 because the pan has dropped temperature a little bit. Mm -hmm. The tuna pulled the temperature out of uh, the pan. And then we remove that and you can see a nice stripe of white on both sides of the tuna. Wow. Okay, that, that's the sear we wanted on both sides. We want that to be equal. Yeah. So we're gonna put that on a cutting board. Now in the same pan, we can turn our heat down a little bit. And it takes a lot of spinach to make a little bit of cooked spinach. <laughs> so it looks like a lot of spinach, but when it wilts down, it goes away pretty quick. Take that. Toss that. Ooh. All right. Really cool. We can turn off our heat because there's plenty of residual heat in here. That's going to wilt really quickly. Ooh, and we take. Good isn't that? Isn't that nice? Mm-hmm. All right. We'll put the spinach right in the center of the plate. All right. Get our hot sauté pan out the way because we're done with that. Now. The tuna, if you remembered it, it had lines running through it, okay? Yeah. That's the grain of the fish. We want to cut across that grain, not with that grain. So we're going to come across the grain, make, you know, nice, I guess close to a three-eighth of an inch thick. All right. And then we'll take these slices and we're going to lay them around and on top of the spinach. Maybe make what I would call a, almost like a starfish <laughs> kind of pattern. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. All right, stick all that up. And one of the, one of the good things about being the chef is the leftover pieces, because you get yes. those. <laughs> um, now this is a sauce, a soy ginger sauce we call it. Of course, this is in the same, uh, on the same page, the same recipe that you'll be able to get on your Facebook page. But it's soy, rice vinegar, a little bit of ginger, garlic, and crushed red pepper to give it a little bit of heat. Mm -hmm. And soy is, you know, strong, so you don't need a whole bunch of sauce on there. Put yeah. that on the plate. And then we've taken some yellow, orange, and red sweet pepper, and we've shaved those up with a little carrot peeler and um, soaked them in some ice water, which makes them firm up and get a little texture on them. Mm -hmm. And um, there's our black pepper crusted seared yellowfin tuna with that braised spinach good. and a soy ginger sauce. Mm -hmm. What do y'all think about that? That looks, looks really delicious. <laughs> so that's pretty simple. So that's something that you think like kids could be able to do? Absolutely, you know. You have an adult there for that hot pan. That's the only thing mm -hmm. you need to worry about. Um, of course, learning knife skills early is, is good mm -hmm. because that way you won't cut yourself. Um, but uh, really, you know, it's quite simple. Um, the ingredients are, are minimal and they're all readily available. So if you find some good fresh fish and 
you're comfortable with the hot pan. Shouldn't be anything you couldn't couldn't knock out yourself there. What do you think? <laughs> That's good. Good. So we're gonna let you do the next one. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, you know, just a little bit, because we're in the kitchen setting, and since we're off-site, and so I want to take advantage of this. So just getting around, um, like, in the kitchen. So what, like, so if a child like Isaiah really wants to get started, so what do you think, like, the basic stuff that he would need, like, really get started in, in learning? So what kind of dishes do you think would be good for him to... You know, it, it goes two ways, usually, with people in, their, in, mm -hmm. in cooking. Uh, baking and, and hot food cooking, I'll call it, or, or cooking, you know, restaurant-type mm -hmm. food, is it's two totally different directions. Oh, wow. Baking is more you know, measuring and focusing mm -hmm. on the measurements and, and really paying attention to the times and temperatures. And it's more of a science to me than, than like cooking this tuna mm -hmm. dish. I like more of the freestyle of getting the kitchen with some pots and pans and some ingredients and add some in taste and add some more in taste. Yeah. And you know, so it really depends which direction they want to go. Baking is a great place to start for sure. That's mm -hmm. a good place to start because there's a com comfortability of it. Um, and if you do get baking out the way first, it makes the other recipes easier. So just kind of depends what yeah. they want to do. So it is like more, I heard about that. It's kind of like a science. Cause it, you have really to get is. like, you know, the right amount of ingredients and you have to do like a certain time. So it's, it's like you're doing a science project, but yes. edible. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, a lot of times it has to do with family. My, my family cooked a lot of Italian food and mm -hmm. we grew up around homemade pizza crusts and homemade pizzas and homemade breads mm -hmm. um, and homemade pasta. So, oh, you know, if your family, you know, maybe your father likes to mm -hmm. barbecue or, yeah. you know, so really you might find yourself gravitating towards starting with the things that your family already does. Okay. Because that's something that everyone is used to and comfortable with. And then from there, it's just, you know, where you want to go. That's cool. So like, what is like, um, what would you be like really important? Like you must do, like, what would you be like your top 10 rules of like when you're learning how to cook? You know, I heard like you have to taste like when you, Oh yeah. Do that. Yeah. No, so that's, some that, other ones? that's a very important, you know, taste everything you cook because mm -hmm. who knows what, you know, maybe an ingredient, uh, I was doing a dinner for, um, Sybil Shepherd, uh, and Bruce Willis in Malibu years and years ago when they had a TV show <laughs> called Moonlighting. <laughs> And um, I had another person there helping me. And we'd spent all this time doing this incredible, she was a big fan of Cajun food. When mm -hmm. she was down in Louisiana with Don Johnson filming The Long Hot Summer, she ate at our restaurant a lot and wanted us to bring Cajun food out to uh, Malibu. And so um, we had this you know, great meal all lined up and waiting for the last couple of guests to get there. And the guy was there helping me. You know, I always liked my ingredients in bowls like that. So I had my sugar, my salt, my pepper. And we had made crepes for dessert. We had fresh mm -hmm. Louisiana strawberries and blueberries that were gonna go in the crepes made with a sauce. So he thought he'd help out and he wanted to put a little bit more sugar in the in the berry sauce, so he grabbed mm. the salt oh, and put no. it in the so <laughs> If, you know, before I served that dish, you know, I tasted it. I said, oh, no, we can't serve that because, mm -hmm. you know, it just tastes like salt, doesn't it? So mm. you never know what could happen. Ingredient mm -hmm. could get mixed up. Something could be wrong. So it's important to taste every dish that you prepare to be sure mm -hmm. that it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's the way it's supposed to be. Um, another thing is knowing your ingredients. It's important mm -hmm. to know your ingredients. And that's so easy. Now, you can just go to the store and walk around Fresh Market and just learn about really neat produce and neat ingredients. Um, mm -hmm. It's important to understand technique. I mean, Technique to me is as much or more important than recipes. Mm -hmm. uh, how to hold a knife, you know, how do you, how do you uh, skim grease off top of a soup or a stock? Um, you know, using uh, different tools like carrot peelers right. and zesters and a rolling pin. Mm -hmm. So technique is important. Um, well, I know. have a question on that one. I know it's like last minute kind of thing. I know we only have a little piece, but could you show him like if he had to cut that? Like, what tip would you give Montel? Like, if he had a well, one of the one of the important one, it, most important ones, is not to cut your finger. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when when you use a knife, um, it's important to get your finger. You know, you don't want your your thumb stuck out here pushing this, or your fingers out like this. You want your fingers tucked back, and the knife actually rides on the front of your fingers. It might seem scary at first, but mm -hmm. if you know the knife is there, you know it's not loose somewhere getting ready to cut you. Mm -hmm. So once you get comfortable running that knife down the back of your finger. Now it can help you guide where you tuck your fingernails under, mm -hmm. the knife goes along here, and now I can cut a nice small thin slice, comfortably knowing where the knife is, and it's not going to bite me because I know where it is. So that's, you know, if you can get that down, and you start off very slowly, and you don't want to start with hard things. I learned, you know, I learned how to cut myself on a carrot. <laughs> Mm. So my first serious chef job, the chef put me back there with a bunch of carrots, a peeler, and he said, peel these and slice them, you know, this thick. So I'm back there not knowing how to use a knife, mm -hmm. and I'm whacking away at the carrot, 
and I miss, and it goes right into my tip of my finger because I wasn't using the knife to keep it off, you know, my finger to keep the knife. So I learned that, but things bounce off of hard items. So if you're cutting yeah. a carrot, it's easy for the knife to bounce or turn towards wow. you or yeah. away from you. So when you're first starting to learn how to use a knife, I would say softer ingredients are okay. better to get used to how to cut. Well, these are really great tips. And you know what? Our like 30 minutes are like over already. Well, like, just I'm like so, that. I know, it went by, I wanted to learn some more stuff. But you know, you gave us some really good tips how to, uh, you know, cut tuna, which is cool. Right. Like, I didn't even know that about the sliding and how you work with ch uh, children and how you taught them. And I'm sure I Isaiah looks really excited. He's been like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. He's ready I'm to pretty, go. I think you're ready, right, to do this. <laughs> well, and, and remember also, if you all want to actually try this awesome dish, you can. Um, we will have the um, recipe on how to do it and also the techniques, and you can always repeat it. Um, and check us out on Facebook so you can watch it again or our YouTube channel, okay? Well, thank you so much for being here. Show. We thank really appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for watching us here on Insight.